as a software developer, more often than not, we are in a situation where we need to test out something on an existing code. That can be a new feature, a new library or a new styling, for example. In those cases, we want to do our testing safely without messing up the existing code. Because if we end up deciding that we don't want to use, for example, that new library, we want to be able to roll back to the original code with minimum effort. One way could be to just hit Command or Control Z until the code looks the same as it did when you started. But this is not a good way because it's a lot of work and if you, for example, close your code editor, the undo feature might not even work anymore. Best way for this kind of situation is to use Git. If you are a seasoned Git user, this might be obvious for you, but if you are not super familiar with Git, I think this video will be helpful for you. So the solution is to use branches. So we can create a new branch from our code. And once we make changes in to that branch, those changes will be only visible in that branch and nowhere else. We can change between branches with just one command and this way also compare and let our teammates compare the changes we make. Let me show you step by step how this works. Okay, so I have my Visual Studio code open and right here I just have a fresh Next.js project that I just generated. So Next.js and Create React App actually comes with the git initialized by default. So we can use git right away inside these projects. If you're using something else, that's not a problem. Uh, we can also initialize git manually and we can do that by opening up the terminal and typing in git init inside your project directory. And after this, we can use git inside the project. So let's say for example, that we want to test out a different font in our application. So we want to see if uh, Comic Sans MS is looking better than this current font. So what we actually want to do is now to make those changes inside a separate branch. So let's first create a new branch. So I'm going to open up the terminal and inside the terminal, I'm going to write git branch and then the branch name. So I'll just name it font test one like this hit enter and now we have a new branch created. We can see all of our branches by typing in git branch. So right now we are on a main branch and we also have that font test one branch over here. So now let's change to that new branch and we can do that by typing in git checkout font test one. And now if we again type git branch we can see that we are currently on the font test one branch. Okay, so now we can do our changes because we are on the new branch. So I'm actually gonna close this terminal and make the changes. So we wanted to change the font to Comic Sans MS. So let's open up the pages and the index.js. And right here, I can see that we have the main element and all the texts are inside of it. So we want to modify this styles.main to have the font family of Comic Sans MS and the styles are imported from styles home module CSS. So I'm going to go there, right here and right here we have the main. So let's add the styling like this. So I will save this and switch to the browser and we can see that the font was changed. So what we want to do now is just to save our changes inside of this branch. And how we can do that is by first staging the files that we modified and then uh, committing them to that branch. So I'll open up my terminal and we can see which files we modified by typing in git status. And right here we can see that the styles slash home module CSS file was modified. And now we want to save these changes inside this branch and we can do that by typing in git commit dash a dash m and then a message, a commit message saying that change font to comic sans ms like this. So this a flag just stages all the files that have been modified for the commit and then this dash m adds the message for that commit and we can type something uh, descriptive inside of that. So I'll just do this and hit enter 
and the changes were committed. So if I type in git status now, we can see that there is no uh, unsaved changes, so to say. But now let's say we wanted to see how the code looked like originally or the application looked like originally. Uh, of course, in this case, we could just remove this font family definition and it would look like the same. Uh, but that is just because this example is so uh, simple. But in a real life example, you would probably have more changes and it wouldn't be that easy to just revert the changes. So how we can go back to the original code or the or original state? Well, we can do that by changing back to the main branch. So inside our terminal, if we type in git branch, we can see we have the two branches over here. And inside this font test one branch, we now have the font set to Comic Sans MS. And inside the main branch is the code uh, that we had originally when we started to work on this. So it has the default font defined. So now if we want to see how the original application looked like, we can just change to this main branch and that's it. So no undoing necessary or anything like that. So we can just type in git checkout main like this. Now if we run git branch, we can see we are on the main branch. And if we switch back to the browser, we can see the font is changed back to the original one. And now if we want to check out how the application looks like with the uh, modified font, we can again just git checkout font test one and the changes are visible right away. Let's say now that we are looking at this Comic Sans MS and we decide that we don't like this font and we want to use the original font. All we have to do is change back to the main branch and then just delete that font test one branch. And we can do that by typing in git branch dash d font test one like this and we deleted that branch. So now if we run git branch, we only have the main branch and the font is as it was. So that's how easy it is to revert back to the original code. But let's say if we make those changes and we did like them, how would we uh, act in that kind of situation? Well, let me just make a new branch real quick and I will change to that branch and then I'll modify the font. Let's set it to Arial Black. And let's see how it looks. Yeah, this looks really good. We want to use this. So what we want to do in this kind of situation, well, first of all, if we run git status, we can see we haven't committed them yet. So let's save these changes inside this branch and commit them like this. So now as we looked at the font, we like this and we want to keep this font and use uh, these changes. What we want to do now is to change back to the main branch and actually merge these changes from the font test two branch to our main branch. And we can do this with the git merge command. So I will type in git merge font test two like this. So right now we are on the main branch and before I run this, I want to check, okay, the font is the original one. And now once I merge these changes and switch back to the browser, we can see that the changes were applied. So inside the style CSS file, we get the font family right over here. So that's how easy it is to use Git branches to test out different features. And if you wish to use them after you have tested them, then just merge the changes to your main branch. And if you decide you don't want to use them, you can just delete that branch and keep working on the main branch. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out.